you. Let's start with Elizabeth Howell uh, from space.com. Hi, and uh, congratulations to the two companies. So I'm just trying to understand about how the spacesuits would work in the sense that you're going to be trying to design for micro G at the ISS and potentially in other environments like that, and also for the moon and Artemis missions. So are we talking two different types of spacesuits at least, or is this going to be more of a modular approach? And I'm thinking the two companies might want to answer, or perhaps NASA, maybe Joel, but let me know. I can, I'll start again. So, um, you know, from all of the work that Vanessa and Lizzie both talked about uh, that the, the NASA team has done, the requirement set for a low Earth orbit suit on space station and a suit on the lunar surface are, is not significantly different, particularly for the life support system. Um, the, the differences really come in the pressure garment, the difference in being in zero gravity on space station versus having to walk on the moon where you need all of the mobility. Um, so really at its core, the requirement set is, is generally the same. Um, but like, like I, in the previous question, we did not dictate to them that it be one suit, two suits, or whatever. We, we basically bounded for them the, um, say, up mass or stowage volume constraints that they would have um, either in a lander or on space station and said, you only have this much room or this much mass to fit extra parts. Um, you know, how then would you do that? And that's the way we were able to get the innovation from the companies um, because they can tell us what they believe their best solution set would be to meet those two differing environments. So, so one thing that's, that's very different between the suits, well, I guess I would say, first off, mass is a much bigger constraint and a driver for a surface suit than it is in microgravity. So in microgravity, as a crew member doing a spacewalk, you could be in the 350 pound suit and it's not an impediment. In fact, maybe by some estimations, it could actually um, actually enhance, It'd be a more stable platform to be in. But on, a, but on a planetary environment, especially when you consider that that environment is not an engineered spacecraft designed for a spacesuit designed for that spacecraft. Instead, you've got trip hazards and all kind in a in a in a in a surface that is not um, amenable to ease of motion anyway. So we would want to have a lower torso assembly that would have enough mobility for the crew member to walk naturally, like they would on on planet Earth. On a space station, it's actually not a not an especially helpful thing. You'd almost, your legs, you don't really use at all. You use your arms to do the EVA um, activity. So you almost, on occasion, would you rather just put your feet into a foot restraint and have your lower torso be essentially like a pedestal, rigid, giving you good stability to work. Very, very different design, but it's really, um, that constraint's really driven by, by the lower torso assembly. So I think, like Laura said, the technologies part and parcel with the life support systems are very, very similar. And that's the goal, is to, to make sure the suits are as similar as they can be. The other one that hasn't been mentioned is dust. Dust is a big, a big deal on the moon, and it's one of the things you don't have to worry about in a microgravity environment, but it's a, it's a big, big problem um, on the surface, so that's another thing that we have to deal with. 